Can you yes. tell us a little bit about how you started your business, Sean? Sure. Yeah. So uh, we opened in 2008 in a part of San Diego um, during the economic recession, um, yeah. a very difficult location. They tell you when you open mm. up a small business, location, location, location. And yeah. um, the location that we picked was was a, a big challenge at a challenging time. Did you and know Did you know that the location was challenging going into it or did you discover that did. after you opened it? Yeah, okay. no, we did. I mean, there was advantages to the, to the difficult location. Obviously, we got right. uh, better terms on our lease. But we picked that location and what we found out early on, we took over an existing breakfast concept and we wanted to bring a sports entertainment destination, um, yeah. really build out this breakfast concept. And what we found early on was it's very difficult business to be in. The restaurant mm. business is difficult. It's hard to get people um, to come in to, to know what you're doing. And we tried all different types of marketing. We um, advertised on the radio. We advertised mm -hmm. in the yellow pages. That was long ago enough, 2008, that we actually you know, spent money on the yellow pages. We joined the Chamber yeah. of Commerce. We did all the standard practices of what you're supposed to do, opening a small business, opening a restaurant, yep. to try to get people to care about what we were doing. And we found it very difficult. Um, we struggled uh, for the first you know, three years trying to figure out ways to pay payroll, ways to get people to come in, try our product, improve our actual restaurant offerings. We switched to doing barbecue. Mm -hmm. and we weren't even a barbecue restaurant when we first opened, but slowly but surely we started to improve the quality of our product, the quality of our barbecue and the quality of our hospitality. Um, yeah. Something that's so important in the restaurant business is how do you make people feel? Um, if they feel like they're welcome, if they feel like they're coming home, then they're more aptitude to go online and write a review on Yelp. They might yeah. go on to Facebook and write a review. And part of our journey happened where, like I said, this location, 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 we were in a difficult location, but the smartphone came out in 2007 and we mm -hmm. opened in 2008. So mm -hmm. as we're starting our entrepreneurial journey and this business journey, we're starting to realize, well, there's these free platforms where we can claim a Yelp page we can update our business info. We can claim our Google listing. We can claim our Facebook page. And I, it's funny, I, when I first opened, I opened with uh, one of my best friends from college. Um, he uh -huh. was my partner. I bought him out four years later. But when we opened, we were roommates and he was on Facebook and I was making fun of him for being on Facebook. <laughs> you know, I was like, you know, we're trying to run a business. Why are you on Facebook? Are you trying to pick up girls? You know, you're trying, right. to, trying to pick up chicks. We need to figure out ways to pay our bills. And ironically enough, you know, it was Facebook claiming a Facebook page for our business and starting this digital marketing, social media marketing journey that we started to realize our online presence is so vital to mm -hmm. who we are and what we do. Mm -hmm. So it's always, you know, as a restaurant, you have to take care of your village. You have to take care of the people that are in your immediate area. Yeah. But we also started to realize that we could share our story online through Facebook, through Instagram, once Instagram came out, through Twitter, through LinkedIn. And as we started to do that, we realized that we were turning marketing into media. Yep. So it okay, wasn't Sean, just... there's go. so much to dig into. Go, here. go, go. <laughs> there's so much to dig into here. Let's let's actually start with the differentiation piece because you started as a sports entertainment um, business and then you transitioned to a barbecue business. Yes. Can you talk about why you decided to make that change and who advised you? How did you go about that? So part of it was we've always one of the most important things fundamental to the who we are is people's giving back. And yeah, um, we all my, my business partner and I, we played sports growing up and there was mm -hmm. the, the area that we're located in. It was very difficult for kids to afford to play sports, organized sports. So we were always doing a bunch of little league fundraisers, Pop Warner fundraisers. And what we yeah. decided was this is getting very administratively cumbersome. So mm -hmm. let's figure out a way to do one event, an annual event. Let's ask other business owners to participate so we could do something different and unique in San Diego. People threw around a bunch of ideas and the best idea was to put on this amateur barbecue contest. Oh, well, that's wow. great, but nobody knows how anything about barbecue and no one knows in how to San put Diego. On. <laughs> Correct. <laughs> So ultimately, what did I do? I went to Google and found yeah. um, the Kansas City Barbecue Society, which is like the sanctioning body for um, barbecue, essentially the NFL. Oh, my of, goodness. Of I didn't barbecue. realize. Yeah. yeah. So there's professional barbecue contests that happen all over the world, you know, over mm -hmm. 600 professional contests. But they had a local representative here in San Diego. OK. Um, that they advised me, you know, you can contact him. He became our barbecue mentor. He helped us mm -hmm. put this amateur event on. He said, if you want to learn how to add barbecue to your menu, I'll teach you. I'll let you use my barbecue pit. 
And ultimately at that point, we realized that was a point of differentiation. That was something yeah. different and unique that we could use to get people all over San Diego County. If we did it well, if we did it the right way, low and slow, we could get people to come across the mm -hmm. county to our business to um, try barbecue. And essentially so, that's what we did. So did you start by making it just one section of your menu and then eventually yep. started to take overtake your whole menu? So you really started with a test, right? Correct. And yeah, then you tested. iterated on it when you saw it was working. Yep. Correct. Yeah. So we first thing we did was brought in ribs and we started cooking ribs and making mm -hmm. sure that, you know, the equipment was working. And then we slowly added uh, tri tip and then we added chicken. And then the last thing we added was brisket because it was the most difficult thing. But once we started to do that, we really started to shape our business. You know, over the last 13 years, we've gone from a business that was built on breakfast that had mm -hmm. no sports to a business that was a sports entertainment barbecue restaurant to now we are a digital barbecue restaurant literally we've, yeah. you know through the pandemic changed everything that we're doing and we're now more focused on how do we get more barbecue to more people um, through mm -hmm. ghost kitchen locations and you're you're also selling barbecue sauces online right you're Correct. doing a lot online as well yes. as so I just want to fast forward here you've done more than 30 million dollars in revenue in the past 12 years or so which is pretty yep. astonishing for a single location breakfast menu yeah, we've, we, you know, it's, it's, I always have to pinch myself to, right. to look, you know, to listen to that figure, knowing uh -huh. when I start to talk to our vendor partners like US Foods, who's, you know, a publicly traded company, they're our primary food, but knowing that our volume is in their top 5% of all of their accounts, knowing yep. that, you know, the things that we're doing in this difficult location that we started um, are just unheard of when you start to look at all the other restaurants. And it's something that it's a testament yeah. to my team. Um, it's a testament to my family and it's a testament to the internet. You know, did you, literally, did you we, think we went all in on the internet. Those first three years when you were just trying to make payroll, did you think you'd ever be there? Absolutely not. I mean, the first, <laughs> the first three years we, I mean, I think we did about 700,000, um, mm -hmm. in the first three years. And then, you know, eventually we got up to the point where we were doing 3.3 3 million in sales annually and yeah. like to get from where we were, you know, 18 employees struggling to pay payroll to a point where we had 64 employees, a thriving business, we're opening up more locations. Um, it was a long journey, but it was yeah. something that had we opened in downtown San Diego in a great location and been successful and built a $3 million restaurant, $5 million restaurant, mm -hmm. we wouldn't have relied as heavily on the internet mm -hmm. as we did. So mm -hmm. because we learned the skill set of how do we promote ourselves on Facebook? How do we make an Instagram post? How do we tweet? How do we get press? Because we were ignored for five years by all of the local media outlets. So mm -hmm. whether it was the radio, whether it was magazines, whether it was the newspaper, local TV, nobody cared about what we were building in Spring Valley. And at that point I said, well, why don't we just start sharing our own story? Why don't we start mm -hmm. using all these social media platforms? Why don't we start using our website to start publishing content about who we are and what we do and the things that we're doing in the community. And as we started to do that, we started to get all these press opportunities. Yeah, it's crazy. Like we and literally how, became, we became our own pre, our PR agent. PR agency. And how did you do that? Who was actually doing that work? Was it all you, Sean? And do you have a knack for it? Do you have some training for it? Like who was actually resourcing <laughs> this? Uh, I mean, I, I did a lot of it, but it, a lot uh -huh. of it was a lot of it's my team. You know, I, I, yeah. I have an incredible team, but I mean, a lot of it has just been done on my iPhone, you know, to be mm -hmm. completely honest with you. Sure. It's, it's out of pure necessity to understand I'm not an expert on Twitter. I'm not an expert on LinkedIn. I'm not an expert on podcasting, on blogging, uh -huh. but I am willing to ask for help. Yes. I'm willing to use the internet to find people that are doing it better than me. I'm willing to mm -hmm. build a community, willing to ask other business owners and other industries, how are they doing it? What are they doing to, you know, improve their e-commerce? You know, one of the, the craziest aha moments for us was we, we would pay thousands of dollars to host a fight night. So a boxing fight um, mm -hmm. on local TV. And there was not many bars in San Diego that would host these events. So because they're so expensive, we'd have to charge a cover charge for people to come in. Right. Well, that's great, but I needed people to know about that. So if someone right. was searching for the Manny Pacquiao versus Mayweather fight in San Diego, what are they doing? They're going on Google and searching that. Well, I needed mm -hmm. a website that would come up in the search results. I needed search engine optimization so that, hey, if somebody's searching for boxing in San Diego, Cali Comfort is going to come up in those search results. Yeah. I went to our webmaster at the time and said, I need, you know, I need this event 
page on our website. I need it on our homepage so that we end up in the search results. And it was a back and forth that took over a week. So I'd have to send him the information. He would fix it. He would send it back. And it was when one of my closest friends, he said, you know, Sean, you need to have a better website. You mm -hmm. need to have a WordPress website that you can go in and update yourself. Mm -hmm. So he helped us literally understand how valuable your website is to your business. Mm -hmm. And I, it's funny because I, you know, I go on a lot of different stages and talk to a lot of different entrepreneurs, a lot of different small businesses, a lot of different restaurant owners. And a lot of what we talk about is video marketing and social media, but nothing is more important than your website. Right. Nothing is more important than your website. And the work that you're doing, Don, is so inspirational. Mm. I'm so grateful that we connected, that you're building the community, that you're building the software that you're doing, because it's so important for re for all businesses. It doesn't matter mm. where your business is located on the globe. Your website is so important. Yeah, because all, all that social media stuff is great, but the goal of it is to really drive people back to your website where they can hear your whole story, where it's yes. not just a quick pose that appears in your timeline for a couple of hours and then disappears again, but where they can actually get the whole story and start to learn about you. I yeah. look, I, I agree, but obviously this is my gig, right? Um, well, I mean, I, I think it's important and anybody that's listening to this podcast yeah. or as a part of the community, we all know how important it is to be on social media. We know oh, how yeah. important it is to, you can't ignore Instagram. You can't ignore Facebook. You can no longer ignore TikTok. You can't mm -hmm. ignore LinkedIn, but if you're posting content, if you're posting video, audio, written word, or images onto those platforms, it needs to go on your website first. Yep. Your yeah. website first. That is where the search is going to drive the actual e-commerce engine for your business, whether you would sell a product or a service. And that is so important, which is why it's so cool to see the work that you guys are doing in the community that you're building. Mm -hmm. So, so now you run all of these different social media channels. One of the challenges that our customers and, you know, the people in our community talk about is that they just don't have the bandwidth to be on all these social media channels. I mean, you guys are huge now and you, you have a, you have a media company attached to your restaurant, but before that, how did you choose which social media channels to focus on? And did you really focus on going deep and just one or, or two, or did you go wide immediately? I mean, I, that's a great question. I think it, it's it's a little bit of both. I mean, mm -hmm. we always go deep and we always go wide. Mm -hmm. So if there's something that we hear about, read about, hear people talking about, um, then we will, number one, if it has to do with our business, we're going to claim the page. So it doesn't right. matter if, if it's a free listing on Yelp, we're claiming yep. the page. We're going to do everything that they allow. Yelp allows us free to do for our business. Yeah. Post and photos, worst case, you get a worst, backlink correct. to your website anyway for SEO, 100, 100%. right? 100%. At least so, you get that. So, and I think that's part of, you know, when I look back at our digital media journey, that was part of our confidence to get to where we are today was mm -hmm. I was always willing to download whatever the free app was and learn the tools within Yelp, learn the tools within the Google My Business app, learn the Nextdoor app, learn yep. the Pinterest app, literally. So that's wide. So yeah, we're going mm -hmm. wide, but we're not posting a lot on Pinterest. Right. Even though I know Pinterest is important. We're going deep in the things that we believe in, mm -hmm. which work for our business, restaurants yep. specifically. Instagram works, Facebook works, TikTok works, mm -hmm. LinkedIn's working phenomenal for our B2B content that we're creating. Uh -huh. podcasting works, blogging works. Yep. And those things are helping us come up with other strategies like appearing on podcasts, you know, coming on this podcast, I get to meet other business owners, like-minded mm -hmm. people. If you're listening to a podcast, if you're taking time out of your day to improve your business, you are a part of a small percent of business yes. owners that are trying to improve their business outside yes. of their business. Because we're all business owners, we're all entrepreneurs. It's mm -hmm. so hard to get out of the day-to-day -day operation and think bigger picture. Yeah, actually, that's that's what I love about podcasts, right? I'll throw one on, I'll go for a walk, I use it as an opportunity to come up with ideas, how I can pr improve my own business, and it's really concentrated time. It's not like yes. if I'm reading a blog post where I might flit about and check my phone. It's concentrated Correct. time, and I think better when I'm walking anyway. So I love that I could do that while I'm walking. Yeah, the, the audio storytelling, it's something that's so powerful. And when you niche Absolutely. down and you start to find other people that are curious about the same talk, because as entrepreneurs, as business owners, it's hard to think, 
does anyone else care? Like, does anyone mm -hmm. else care about a barbecue restaurant owner that has a podcast? Well, once we started producing this podcast, it wasn't just about barbecue. It was about social media. It was about digital media. It was about sports entertainment. It was about all the things that I, if, if I was a professor at school and I, and I wanted to teach a class, this is really, yeah. this is what literally what I would put on. Yeah. So we started podcasting about it and turns out there's people all over the globe that are interested in exactly in the stuff that we're yeah. talking about. Well, this is one of the things that I think is really great about your business is that you're doing a lot of things that are unexpected in your industry. And you talked about how, when you started, you did all the expected things. You yep. joined the chamber of commerce, you got a yellow pages ad, and now you're doing all these unexpected things, right? You're right. podcasting, you're a barbecue restaurant that is podcasting. Yes. You're a barbecue restaurant that is selling media as a consulting product, right? Like these are really interesting additions to your business. And I want to, I want to understand why you chose to do those things. Is it just because you liked them or is it because you tested these things and saw that there was interest there? Like, how did you decide to really put yourself in these out in these ways that are really unusual? I mean, I, I think a lot of it, you know, has to do with what my grandfather taught me and that's mm. to stay curious to get yes. involved and to ask for help. Mm -hmm. I mean, my grandfather was born in Bulgaria on a village in 1919, and he was born to be a farm boy. If it wasn't yeah. for his love of reading and his love to improve himself, he would have never left that village to become a medical doctor mm -hmm. in World War II in Germany. Like that, that desire to always be better and to always to, to think that it's, it's much bigger than yourself. I mean, it's mm -hmm. so much bigger than barbecue for us. It's bigger than restaurants. It's bigger than small business. I mean, this is a, you know, we are here in 2021 where the iPhone 13 has just come out. You know, I'm the, the iPhone, thir the first iPhone came out on June 29th, 2007. Mm -hmm. And this is only 13 years. And to think about what kind of opportunities, what kind of wealth, what kind of platforms have been created for small business On owners that. to mm -hmm. share their, what happens in their village it happens all over. I mean, my wife yeah. is from Bulgaria. Every single year I go back with my son, he's four years old, my daughter, she's two. We go to Bulgaria, to her village. And to, there's a city right outside Vratza, it's 200,000 people, but her village, but there's businesses there. There's restaurants there, there's bars mm -hmm. there. Like they have the need for having a website. They have the need for having delivery. These are yeah. all problems that me as a restaurant owner here in San Diego, I'm going through. Mm -hmm. So if a restaurant owner there is curious, they can literally go onto a podcast. They can go onto a YouTube yeah. channel. They can go onto Instagram. They can search the things and they can find ideas that can move their business forward in ways that we've never been able to before. One of the things I hear from small business owners is that they're, they're often reluctant to try something that's really new. They want to wait and they want to see if it really takes off. And what I'm hearing from you is that you're really an early adopter of new technologies, which yes. leads me to ask, what did you do about Clubhouse? Clubhouse, we went all in. We're, yeah. We absolutely love Clubhouse is such, it's, it's podcasting in a way that it allows people to do what we talk about, stay curious, get involved. So if you hear something, if you're hearing this conversation on Clubhouse and you're in the audience, you can raise your hand mm -hmm. and you can ask a question. You know, so what we've done with our with our podcast specifically, every week we publish on Thursday our digital hospitality episode, but on Friday at 10 a.m. Pacific Standard Time, we have a Clubhouse room with the guest. So we'll bring the guest on from that week and then we'll have an interactive conversation to go deeper into something that they talked about. But I'll also bring my team on because my team, Toby, who's part of our team, Stover, who's mm -hmm. my producer, Ian, who's the writer who will create an article based off of the conversation that we have. They hear things differently in the conversation that pique their interest that they can ask a question about, which actually adds more depth to the conversation. So, I mean, mm -hmm. the audio storytelling part of Clubhouse is just, it's so phenomenal. And I, I highly encourage more business owners, it doesn't matter what business you're in, to be on that platform because you can connect with all people all over the globe. And it's what we call deep social. Yeah. So it's, it's a platform that allows you to fill out your bio, but then it'll put your Instagram account and you can put your Twitter account. And then you hear somebody that is compelling to you. And then you follow them on Instagram, that person that you're following on Instagram, if you've heard them on clubhouse, you have a deeper connection to them than somebody that you just follow on Instagram because you saw mm -hmm. a video or you saw an image, but you heard them speak. So How now your time. You how much of your time these days is spent making content and doing marketing versus running a restaurant? Uh, 80%. Yeah. 
yeah. And do, do you think media. it's the passion that led you there? Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, I, I would have suffocated. I mean, I'm, I'm, oh, I hear it. An, I hear I'm it. not an operator um, by uh -huh. any means. I'm not the chef. I'm not the pit master. Eric yep. Olofsson, he's my general manager. He's the one that runs the business. Um, I mean, the, the storytelling side of what my grandfather, you know, I, I spent two years with my grandfather writing his life story, self publishing his book. Um, and that's something that I'll cherish for the rest of my life. It's something mm -hmm. I read to my kids. It's something I hope they read to their kids someday. It's the storytelling aspect of we have the greatest tools available right now to share yeah. our story, whether yeah. it's our business story, whether it's our family story, and we're at the perfect time to be able to do that. So what I, what I, what I'm getting to Sean here is that you are someone who really wanted to do the marketing and really, I mean, I, I hear that passion in you, but there are a lot of business owners who want to run the restaurant and yes. who want to be the pit master. And if you're talking to them, how would you guide them to do all the kinds of things that you've been doing for their business if they don't want to be the person doing it 80% of the time like you are? Would you advise them to do it just 20% of the time? Or would you say you should hire an agency or you should hire somebody part-time to come and work for you from a marketing perspective? Like, what would you recommend? Because not everybody's going to go all in the way you have. So the, what, that's a great question. I've actually never been asked that question. I've been on hundreds of podcasts. So <laughs> I, I, I appreciate the question. And I, I think the, the answer that I, that I would honestly tell any business owner is I think that we're at a point now where it's so much easier than we make it out to be. The mm -hmm. marketing side of what we're doing, the media side of what we're doing, all it literally is, is I'm picking up my iPhone now. Yeah. You pick up your iPhone and you put it on a tripod and you press play. Mm -hmm. Like literally the most powerful app that we all have in our Android or our iPhone is the camera app. Yep. And video is what the internet wants. The yep. internet wants native video, short form video. So if yep. you're the cook, if you're the pit master, if you're an attorney, it doesn't matter what business, if you're, if you style hair, you need to just turn that camera on and yep. tell the story of what you do and give the behind the scenes, talk about your day, talk about your struggles, talk about your successes. That is how we connect through humans. We want to know what's happening in the village and yep. you'll be so much different than no matter who else, whoever else you are, you'll be different than all of the big players in your industry. You'll be different than all of the small players and you'll connect with other like-minded people that are doing the same thing in your industry. And that will help move you forward. It'll help move the industry forward. You know, I was talking to you some conversion rate optimization agencies this week. So these are, you know, companies who are focused on helping um, increase the number, increase the rate of people who convert on your website. So whether it's they book an appointment or they make a sale or whatever. And he was telling me, he said, look, he says, the thing is videos that you shoot yourself quickly in your spare time, when you just think about it and you just pick up your camera and you shoot it, we find that those videos often perform much better than the ones that we have professionally produced because they have this authenticity that you just cannot buy. And so I think, you know, to your point, you don't have to spend 80% of your time on it. You could spend 20% of your time, just get over yourself and make a little video and publish it and just not be afraid about it. And don't be embarrassed about it. And it has that yeah. authenticity that you just can't buy. You're hundred percent correct. And, and part of what you said too, is the most difficult time that I see is people pressing pu publish, actually yes. publishing the video. Yeah. Like it's terrifying. And I understand yeah. the fear because I was terrified to go on local news to have, you know, the lead anchor here in San Diego, ask me questions about barbecue and me not know the answer. But right. when I got over my own fear and realized it doesn't matter what question they ask about barbecue. Nobody knows the barbecue media story like I do. Right. It's our story. Yeah. You know, I can always control the answer. I can't control the question, but I can control the answer. Yeah. And that 80% of the time, you're already doing the work is the point. You just need to press publish. You need to press play and then press publish. Mm -hmm. You need to not worry about how many views it gets. You need to not worry about how many subscribers are, how many followers you have. You just need to develop the habit of every single day I do a video. Yep. every single day. And I'll do a different video the next day and I'll do a different. And then after 30 days, I'm going to look and say, well, you know, I thought that if I was talking about barbecue, that would get the most engagement. Well, it turns out me talking about being a dad as a business owner is getting the most engagement. Is it, is actually that the case for you? It is the case. I mean, a lot of the times, the things that people will talk to me about uh, when they heard it on the podcast or they read mm -hmm. about it in the blog or my LinkedIn posts, it's about, it's about fatherhood. Yeah. 
I mean, that's what they connect on, right? It's that human to human aspect. Well, that's a wrap. If you enjoyed this episode of Marketing Made Easy, please subscribe to Jotful's YouTube channel. That's J-O-T-T-F-U-L. That way, you'll never miss an episode. We'll meet you on the next one.